Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do an overview of the all new MSI X870 Tomahawk Wi Fi. This is the new motherboard for the AMD Ryzen 9000 series or AM5 platform. This is the X870, and there is no E variant to this. Let's go. I'm going to show you all what you get with this motherboard. We're going to look at the motherboard towards the very end. But let's see what comes inside this box first. You've got the Wi-Fi antenna in here. You've got stickers, you've got manuals and whatnot. I think it's about time manufacturers actually stop with this and let's just go with QR codes. You've got SATA cables. You've got an easy front panel connector. What this connector does is actually solidifies all your front panel headers into one. You've got plenty of M.2 screws. You've got this unique cable, more of this later on. And lastly, you've got a pen drive with all the latest drivers installed into it. So that's all you actually get when you purchase this motherboard. It's not too much, it's not too little, it's just the right amount of stuff that you need. So here, we have this. I've told you all today that this is the X870 Tomahawk. You can actually see that the color pattern or the color profiling to the motherboard has changed from its previous generation. You have now black and a sort of a lime yellow color to it. I don't know how many of you all are actually going to go about with the change in the color profiles, but for me, I actually kind of like this black and yellow theme to it. So this is actually a no-frills motherboard. It's, it's like the top of the line, entry-level motherboard from MSI. You see, MSI has three different segments to their products and components. You've got MEG, MPG, and MEG. So this comes under the MAG, Arsenal Gaming series of lineups. And this is the best there is for its Arsenal Gaming lineup. Anything higher than this, you would be looking at the Carbon or even the Godlike or the Ace or the Unify. So you may ask, what's special about this board? Honestly, it's a motherboard that every common user would actually want to get. It's, it, has the, it has just the right amount of functions and features at the correct price point. More often than not, you actually see motherboards being overpriced. You're paying 1,800 ringgit, 1,900 ringgit for basic motherboards. I'm not going to name a few, but I'm sure many of you are actually aware of that, that the pricing for motherboards has escalated over the years now. Compare it to, what, 2017, 2018, where you could get a really good mid-range or a high-end entry-level motherboard at only five to 600 ringgit. So let me start off with the VRM configuration for this motherboard. This motherboard comes with a 17-stage VRM configuration, okay? Sorry, a 17-phase VRM configuration. It comes with 80 amps of smart power stages. So you can actually see that the motherboard's VRM are down here, just like any other motherboard. However, take note of the size of the heat sinks. I kind of find the heat sinks on this motherboard a little bit bigger than usual and wider than usual. So if you're actually installing it into a compact case, take note, you might have a little bit of difficulties, but beyond that, nothing much about this part of the motherboard. You've got four M slots. You've got three PCIe by 16, lots, uh, by 16 slots, and you've got four M.2 slots. Okay, the four M.2 slots in this motherboard you will have to actually understand how it works. You've got two PCIe 5.0s and two PCIe 4.0s. You can actually see diagrams printed on the motherboard next to the M.2 slots. What is the function of these diagrams? 
This diagram actually shows you where the PCIe lanes are being drawn from. Okay? It actually shows you whether it's coming from the chipset or whether it's coming from the processor. Two PCIe Gen 5s, two PCIe Gen 4s. However, take note that one of it can only reach up to speeds of 32 gigabytes per second, while the other can go up to 64 gigabytes per second. Basically, PCIe 4 times 4 or PCIe 4 times 2. So as for by 16 lanes, you've got three here. The top one has been reinforced with steel, while there are two just in its standard plastic configurations. Okay, so for your main graphics card, you can actually put it in the topmost slot. For any other expansion cards, you can actually put it in the other two. However, if you were to use the third slot, one of the M.2 slots will be disabled. You can actually alternate between this in your BIOS settings. Okay, talking about BIOS. Talking about the BIOS of MSI today. Honestly, I actually love MSI's current BIOS. It's a huge upgrade from its previous generations. And with the new MSI BIOS Click X, everything is so much more easier and simpler to understand now. And the best part is that I only thought that the Click BIOS X was only for the higher end models. But MSI, they're generous. They've actually brought it in even for this motherboard. It's somewhat similar to the MSI Carbons one. However, it has a different color scheme. It follows the Tomahawk color scheme of the motherboard. So this time around, MSI is firmly believing in the concept of one. What do I mean by this is that MSI is actually pushing boundaries in order to be the number one motherboard manufacturer in the world. So in line with this, they've come up with a new one approach. You've got the one finger, you've got the one hand, you've got the one step, and you've got the one glance access to this motherboard. What do I mean by all these ones? Basically, the MSI X870 Tomahawk is the one you need. Okay, enough of that, but here, let me explain on what is this ones about. So you've got one finger. One finger is basically this. I've removed the top M.2 slot with only one finger. I can also do the same with the bottommost M.2 slot. One finger. So we're still at one finger. What MSI also means besides the M.2 slots of the one finger thing is that with one finger, you can actually release this graphics card. So by pressing the toggle over here, it unlocks the lock for the graphics card slot. And it comes off. This interface was also seen in the X870 Carbon. And I applaud MSI for actually bringing this over on this motherboard. Many times do we see the entry level segment being deprived of good features. This is why I appreciate MSI for this motherboard being priced at only 1500 plus plus. You've got debug LEDs. And if you've got Q codes, being a PC builder for many years, the majority of motherboards don't actually come with this feature, Q codes. Having this feature actually simplifies the process of troubleshooting any issues that arise from a built-up PC. So the last thing I would like to touch about, touch about the concept of ones with MSI this time is, if you actually look at the motherboard, there's this spot over here which says it's called EZCON, E-Z-C-O-N-N. -N. What is this spot and what it does is basically, earlier when we were showing you the contents of the motherboard, there was a cable, the EZCON cable. So this EZCON cable has to be plugged in over here. Once you plug it in, you've got extra access all the way from one slot to connect fan headers, ARGB headers, and MSI's proprietary AIO connector. This is for their magnetic fans. So even if you don't use this, you can actually use this too and tuck it in all the way at the back of your casing for more pleasant looking setup. So as per with AM5, 
This motherboard only supports DDR5 RAMs. The motherboard supports speeds of 4800 MHz all the way up to 8400 MHz. However, to operate at 8400 MHz, there are certain criteria that you need to meet, of which I'm not going to talk about it in this video today. However, since we're actually touching on the topic of RAM, if you actually look at the motherboard, the region next to the motherboard is practically empty from any components of the motherboard. Having anything on this part of the motherboard interferes with the signals from the processor to the memory. So having this region clear ensures optimal current and optimal power goes into the memory slots. So if you're into memory overclocking and all not and whatnot, I'm pretty sure this motherboard actually works well for you. Another interesting element that MSI has actually implemented with this motherboard is, if you look at the USB connectors on the motherboard, they are all horizontal. Normally you would find all these USB 3.0 type C headers for the F panels and all this vertically mounted. So if they are actually vertically mounted, the cables that you're actually going to connect to these headers tend to be bent this way. So when it's bent this way, over a certain period of time, it gets loose and damage is done to the motherboard and those headers. So since it's actually horizontal, everything actually falls just nice in place. So even when you're actually putting it up into a PC casing, these flat connectors make your build look neat and tidy. So this is the rear I.O. panel. You can actually see that the rear I.O. panel comes with a lot of connectivity options. We've got multiple USB type A ports, multiple USB C ports, uh, RJ45 LAN port, MSI's easy connection for the antenna, and the audio connectors. So you may ask, what motherboard suits you? Should I go for the X870 or should I go for the X870E? So here's uh, the main difference between these two chipsets. Okay, the X870E chipset okay has twice the number of ports, USB ports, peripheral ports, and whatnot, and PCIe lanes over your regular 870 motherboards. The thing here is that it all falls down to basic needs and requirements. If you need more USB ports on your motherboard. If you need more PCIe lanes on your motherboard, you need more M.2 connectors on your motherboard because M.2 connectors draw power from the PCIe lanes. USB ports, USB ports draw powers from the PCIe lanes and whatever at the back here draws a lot of power from the PCIe lanes. So if you need more of those, then the 870E motherboard is for you. If you can actually make do with this many ports, then the 870 is for you. That's about it for this motherboard. Enjoy the B-rolls at the end. Thank you and see you all in the next one.